Hello everyone. So uh, I will, today I will be to the local steel company in Indonesia. And, and then we will compare with the an international steel international steel company. It's a postal company. It's a company from Korea. So uh, and in the first part, uh, let, let me tell you the China Steel Corporation (CIC) because uh, our uh, because the company we will be then is member of CIC. So uh, CIC the China China Steel Corporation uh, is uh, lo located in South District, Kaohsiung, Taiwan. Uh, it also has office in uh, Taipei, Osaka, Japan, and uh, Singapore. Uh, and the, the corporation and this sister company are uh, administered uh, under the CSC group. And CSC is the largest in, in the world steel maker in Taiwan. And according to the, the International Iron Steel and Iron and Steel Institute, CSC is the uh, 25th largest steel producer in the world in 2006. And then so uh, let me tell you something about the CSC history. Uh, CSC history is was planned and organized in the 1960s and the corporation was officially established uh, on uh, December, after the 3rd December 1971. And it is located in Taipei between the 1971 and 1977, 1975, but just located to Kaohsiung since the 15th September 1975. And after the first blast furnace was launched on the 27th June 1977, and a uh, few months later, the first step of the building plan was accomplished. And then the second and the third step were subsequently accomplished in the 1982 and 1988. Uh, now, uh, the, the, the company uh, have a total of four blast furnaces. So, uh, it, uh, uh, the CIC was started as a non-governmental uh, company, a corporation, but uh, all of this is a non-governmental company, uh, the government, the Taiwanese government, uh, is uh, still more than the large portion of the stock. So, uh, the chairman of uh, the company is supported by the government. And then it is, so, in here it is, uh, so let me introduce some uh, steel corporation. That's some corporation such as the Chinese Steel Corporation, uh, Dragon Steel Corporation, uh, Chinese Steel Sumitian Vietnam, George Stock Company, and the uh, company we will present is the True Steel Corporation in the last time. And uh, CSC, uh, CSC Group was, has some other group business as uh, engineering businesses, uh, industrial material business, logistics business service, and investment businesses. And uh, in, in the next part, um, I kind of will be then the true steel corporation. So this time we visit the uh, Zhonghong Steel, Zhonghong Dante in Xiaotong. And this is their company, and uh, this guy is HR head in Zhonghong Steel. And now I'll give the brief introduction of Zhonghong Steel. Zhonghong Steel's predecessor was Yenong Enterprise and it was officially renamed on July 14, 2004. Uh, but it was ex established in Chaotou, Xian in September 1983. And uh, in early 1987, it is accomplished the... Chaotou, Xiang. Oh, Xiang. Mm. Right. Thank you. And in early 1987, it accomplished the establishment of coal rolling department. And in... Xiang, sorry, uh, Xiang is the town, mm -hmm. right? not the county. Oh. No, county, uh, county is a very big area. Mm -hmm. the Xiang is just a small town. Yeah. And uh, in mid-1987, it established the Time and Two Department with annual capacity of 72,000 tons in Dafa Industry District. And in April 1997, it accomplished the hot rolling department. And in terms of a vertical integration of upstream and downstream domestic steel industry, General Steel decides to have a uh, strategic alliance with China Steel Corporation. And in 2000, 
He officially became a member of CSC Group. And here's the company organization of uh, Zhong Hong Steel. You can see the most important part of the steel company is their production line. And they have hard rolling, co rolling, pipe tube, and the technology department. And the HR department is in the administration department. And the operation concept of CHAs. They take the flats to changes and developing teaching and lead and efficiency and creating many senior handle of the company. And their vision you can see that there are three visions that I have and the initial character of each word is C and H and S. The first one is compete competence and honesty and service, which means that they are always being honest to their customer and they uh, try to uh, provide the best services to their customers. And I briefly introduced the product of CHS. The first one is the most basic product, which is hot roll. The hot roll coils is like this, uh, because the appearance is a little bit black, so we also call the black thin coils, and it can be to, uh, for revolving, slating, and piping. And the second one is cold roll. You can see the appearance is more shiny than the previous one. And the uh, cobra can be used in furniture, computer cases, and the drones, uh, etc. And the third one is the pipe. Uh, pipe and tube products are widely used for pipeline transportation. And there is a, they have a factory in Taichung, which they mainly uh, produce pipe, and they use for oil transportation. And uh, this time we focus on the uh, interview uh, in the HR department. Because Sorry, the department did, did they guide you to see all the manufacturing process? No, we wish no. we can, but it's hard to <laughs> visit no. the country. No, uh, region, the, yeah. all, all the, the, this uh, steel, right, they need to be a manufacturer uh, by means of this uh, very high potential, yeah. high tech potential. Very dangerous. Yeah, very dangerous. Yeah. Very high. Unfortunately, yeah. a lot of the people get paid very low wages, and they work in very dangerous uh, environments. <laughs> this is your comment. <laughs> okay. So, um, begin with the interview with the HR head, Mr. Yu. Uh, he's an employee in CHS, and he worked there for almost 15 years. Mm. But he just trans been transferred to HR department in 2010, so it's kind of new for HR. But he has been experienced in many different departments, like uh, administration department. And he was doing uh, planning the company system for, or production line system for CHAs. I'm sorry, he has worked in CHAs for 18 years. And um, currently they have five members in the department. And what does HR department do? Actually, they have to deal with many other departments, so when other departments have some problems, they will come to HR, and they have to solve the problems for them. So it's kind of hard for five people to do the whole stuff in the company. And how do you feel working as an HR head? He thinks that HR job is very challenged because uh, he has never done HR job before, but when he first time came to an HR team, he has to hold a big recruiting event, which has never been experienced before. And he has to calculate the uh, wages for each employee, which is very um, stressful for him because he's not very good at figures. So he got a hard time to do that. And uh, we asked him to give some suggestions for us or the people who want to HR in the future. And he gives us some um, suggestions. First, uh, if the people want to do HR, they, they have to be like to face people and be willing to listen to them. And the second, being flexible. The rules are dead, and it, but humans are alive. We cannot always use the same rules to solve different kinds of problems. And third is innovation. Although the CHS is a very traditional industry, the HR head thinks they should have some new ideas of HR management. 
and foreign and see a problem as a whole instead of focusing on the current situation we see. We cannot just focus on the problem that we have so far. We have to think if there are more possibilities in the future, so we will have the best uh, solution. In one way, CHR, uh, CHS HR department used to recruit, recruit employees. Actually, like uh, other companies in Taiwan, they cooperate with HR Internet Bank, like 104 HR Bank, 1111 HR Bank, and the YES 123. And we found a very interesting phenomenon that uh, even though for HR Bank, they had a different market share. And it told us that YES 123 especially take much bigger market share in the middle of Taiwan. Mm -hmm. And when they recruit people, the first is for paper test. It includes a English test and some special skill test that each in department asks for. And the third is the interview. So what's the first thing that CHS take into consideration when recruiting? Depending on different kinds of jobs, they will have different standards for people. For take the engineer department, for example, when they want to recruit engineers, they will ask for some special license so they can get into a department. And almost all the engineers in CHS have a master degree. And uh, for a simple HR regulation, like common companies in Taiwan, they have three month trial period. And how about their bonus system? Actually, you don't have a third term percentage bonus given system in their company. So their bonus will depend on their yearly revenue. So when they earn more, they will give their employees more bonus system. But we ask them, what if you don't earn any in that year? They will figure it out and uh, give some compensation for their employees, which is good. And how do they evaluate their employees? First. Uh, KPI, key performance indication, but they only use KPI in the factory, for the factory workers. And for administration people, they will use their own evaluation system. They will label in like A, B, or C. But what if uh, their employees does not get the grades from the evaluation? They will offer some special training and uh, talk to them and ask them where they have any problems at work and they will give them certain help. And they never fire employees mm -hmm. in their company history. So any official promotion system, they will focus on the personal ability instead of how much experience they have. Some company just focus on how, much, how many years you work for a company or how much experience you have in the past. But they just focus on your ability. So if you really perform very well, you can be promoted anytime. And for a step training program, uh, actually at each department can ask a department to design a training program for their department. So they will offer a regular uh, training for each department and then they will offer the certain trainings uh, when other departments ask for it. And they don't have budget limit for staff training, which means that their companies support, fully support uh, staff training in their company. And next, we'll introduce TTQS. Mm, TTQS. Okay, I'm going to introduce why is TTQS. Uh, TTQS is an education system developed by Taiwan governments. They use this system to help Taiwan Corporation to evaluate their human resource management. And let's see how do they work. First, they have to plan, plan next year's strategy, job vacancy, and uh, company rules. Then they have to train training program design. And they will training conducting recorder. Finally, they will training review, and in the end, they will uh, have some out outcomes and the training results, and including all the uh, certification survey and the improvement of the company through <coughs> employee training. And next is a question about 
talented gap in CHS because we know uh, recently uh, many Taiwan local company like this uh, problem because many companies uh, levy, they already set up for maybe 13 or 15 years so they will face this problem and also they tell me us they face this problem uh, because uh, many of uh, lots of managers they are going to retire within two years so uh, how do they solve this problem uh, they're looking for the leaders of new generation in their company and they like to select them from inside employees because uh, those employees are familiar with culture of this enterprise and the moral loyalty. Uh, these characters are what they need. Uh, also, they tell us for a steel company, they don't need too much creative and innovation because it's a mature industry in Taiwan. So that's why they don't need to hire manager from outside. And about current job vacancy, and because they are uh, still manufacturers, so most of job vacancy is uh, engineers, and they don't hire foreign workers because they don't have uh, overseas branch. <coughs> and that is a special bonus project for employees, and they have uh, special staff motivated project uh, for fifteen years. For example. Uh, any employee in their company, they could come up with any uh, method which could improve their work, uh, the way to set working time and set code, then they will get some uh, bonus. And anyone who propose a new proposal could be awarded. And what kind of proposal of CHS has so far? Because uh, it is a steel company, so it's easier for factories to provide some idea about safety improvement. And it's also a safety model company in Taiwan. And they have some award gold medal of safety. And this is the recent award about safety model uh, last year. So next time we'll introduce a postcode company from Korea. Mm. Thank you, Lena. Um, so our goal here in this presentation was to uh, present a, a local steel company and compare and contrast it with an international steel company because this is of course international resources <laughs> so we needed to uh, have another sort of benchmark company to compare this local company with. So we did that with POSCO. Uh, POSCO right. was founded in uh, Korea on April 1st, 1968. And it's uh, Pohang Steelworks, which is in Pohang, South Korea, was completed in uh, 1983. Its first production line produced over a million tons of crude steel. Um, on the heels of uh, increased demand and uh, increased facility efficiency and productivity, uh, POSCO became the world's leading crude producer in 1998. Currently, they are number five. Um, and that's based on 2012 numbers, so the year 2015, we're not exactly sure where they will end up. Um, so, uh, the main difference we were able to find between POSCO's human resources and that of Chang'an is that POSCO's is uh, well established and readily available to read. Um, they have um, a very well codified and very explicit uh, code of conduct. Rules of, uh, rules of conduct, guidelines, major activities, and recruitment policies. So um, what we did was we analyzed uh, the company's strengths and weaknesses with regards to their recruitment policy and their ethical standards. Uh, these codes of conduct and these rules of conduct were established in uh, 2003, so they're relatively new in comparison to the company itself, um, but they thought it was a necessary step to take uh, if they were to become a truly global uh, and trusted and respected company. Um, so, their code of conduct is based into six parts, uh, as you can see here. Uh, first and foremost, they have their fundamental responsibilities. These are, um, again, enacted because they 
their goal was to become a truly globally respected company. And without a code of conduct, without a set of moral values, they wouldn't be able to do that. So their fundamental responsibilities are aimed to be respected uh, and trusted uh, internationally, not just locally. Their uh, commitment to customers, business partners, and competitors is based on uh, their goal to deliver the best product and service possible. They also want to uh, establish mutually beneficial uh, relationships with, um, with these people they interact with. And they also want to guarantee impartial treatment, which means uh, you know, if the CEO's former classmate owns company X, it doesn't mean that he is going to get preferential treatment based on that fact. Um, the third one is a commitment to stockholders and investors. Uh, this is another main difference we found between uh, POSCO and uh, the local steel company here in Taiwan, is that they are committed to transparency with regards to their decision making, um, and they also offer full disclosure. Um, if we didn't go and interview Chung Hong, it would be very difficult to find this kind of information. Whereas with POSCO, it's readily available, like I said before. Um, uh, number four, they have a commitment to employees, uh, which means they want to promote dignity, privacy, equal opportunity, and uh, an attitude of non-discriminatory uh, towards criteria that aren't necessarily related to job description. Um, their company culture is based on mutual trust and understanding. They want to foster a safe and healthy working environment. Uh, their fifth code is uh, a commitment to local, national, and global communities, so those that they interact with, not just in Korea or Taiwan or in China, but all over the world. I'm going to get to uh, a little later in the presentation uh, how truly global this company is. Um, and the last one is a commitment to the environment, uh, which is kind of ironic considering uh, the product they produce and how heavy of an impact it does have on the environment itself that is related to doing what they can to protect it. Again, here are the rules of conduct. So if the code of conduct was enacted to establish uh, behavior based on the organization of, as, as a whole, rules of conduct are uh, enacted to uh, promote uh, how employees interact with other people and how the company interacts with its employees. So uh, just to highlight a few here, I'm not going to go over every single one of them, but uh, the respect of people and the, um, the respect of social norms and reputations are two ones that I wanted to highlight, as well as the establishment of a culture of ethical excellence, because they do operate um, across so many borders. They need to be aware of different cultural norms and the attitudes of other people they affect. Uh, if they were only to use the culture of Korea, I don't think they would be as successful as they are today. And here are some guidelines and major activities. Again, I just want to highlight a few. Um, but they do have a description of, again, how they interact with other people. Uh, namely, I wanted to highlight uh, the appropriate way to give and receive money or gifts as well as the appropriate way to entertain clients. So companies can uh, at times get in trouble with you know, taking a client out uh, for an out in the town and then maybe participating in some inappropriate activities. So they have this clearly defined uh, outline of how uh, their employees who represent the company itself are supposed to uh, handle themselves. And they also provide uh, a series of ethical uh, workshops and education on corporate ethics. Um, and next I want to talk about their recruitment policies, how they find employees to work for their companies all over the world. Uh, as a global citizen, uh, their recruitment policies are clearly outlined. Uh, some standards include uh, multilingual capabilities, being able to speak multiple, multiple languages is obviously very important for a company that and works all over the world, as well as the knowledge of uh, information technology. Uh, their employees also need to be creators. They need to have a passion and drive to pursue and accomplish tough goals, 
as well as creating the value and growth for the company. And they also need to be uh, adequate problem solvers through observing and analyzing. Uh, as an executor, their employees need to complete tasks with pride, confidence, and uh, a certain level of professionalism. So, what does that mean? What does all of this mean? It means POSCO is truly global, whereas Chang'an is very local. Um, they operate all, all over the world. Uh, you can see here where it is they operate. This is their Japanese headquarters. So they operate from Japan to Australia, um, America to, uh, to India. So literally all over the world. Um, their human resource practices are, again, like I said, very explicit, very easy to find. Um, it's a reflection of their global strategy. However, that's not to say that POSCO hasn't uh, come across some uh, human resource um, problems along the way. Uh, I wanted to highlight India here specifically because recently they had just pulled out of creating a steelworks plant in uh, Odisha, India. Um, they, uh, they were ready to invest over $5 billion, which would have at the time um, been the largest foreign direct investment uh, in their country's history, India's history. However, they pulled out of the project because there was a dispute with regards to acquiring certain land from uh, communities that live there. So they couldn't come to agreement, therefore they pulled out of that project. So uh, if you Googled Odesha and POSCO, you would see pictures of uh, large protests and rallies um, against POSCO because the local communities there didn't want you know, a, a huge steel factory intruding upon their, their land. Um, so just because the human resource practices are well established doesn't mean there are, they aren't always uh, necessarily practiced uh, in reality. Um, but that's not to say that POSCO isn't very successful. Uh, another interesting fact is that they're backed by uh, Berkshire Hathaway, which is uh, Warren Buffett's investment firm. They own about 5% stake in the company. Um, and they're very particular about who they invest in. So it's sort of a, uh, a motion of confidence because uh, Warren Buffett's investments are closely watched and he's considered one of the most successful investors in the world. So for POSCO to have him as a financial backer, it uh, bodes well for their global image there and their company as a whole. Um, so I guess now I'm going to pass it on to Daniel who is going to uh, review our presentation and uh, provide a conclusion. All right. So, uh, thank you. In regards to concluding this presentation, actually, our opinion about our visit. Uh, when we traveled to Chowtow, uh, I think we were all a little shocked that we were going to this large steel manufacturer in Taiwan. And they looked at, especially as foreigners, like we were aliens. Uh, like they had never seen us before. The whole office stopped moving to stare. And um, it was almost a, a grand event for them. Uh, the HR department was very nice to us and very opening, but it was very informal. Um, we initially wanted to do the steel company because, uh, well, Helen had connections to the company. And um, we knew a lot of people would be doing these large international companies that had all of their stuff clearly stated. We wanted to go into the local community because we are international um, human resources. We're from other cultures. We wanted to see how a Taiwanese company actually was running itself because we may end up in one of these companies someday. And it was very different. So we had to meet the challenges of relating a local company to an international company. Unfortunately, we weren't able to travel to Korea to be able to yeah. visit this other company, but it was very worthwhile to um, visit Chowto and to see how they were running things. Uh, I'm just going to back, uh, go back a little bit and... Um, Zhang Hong? Zhang Hong. Steel Company. Zhang Hong. Um, their HR director um, had, didn't, didn't study human resources. He had 18 years of experience with the company, and they just liked him, so he ended up getting promoted into an area. He was the first to admit he didn't know what he was doing when he got hired. He wasn't good with figures. He wasn't good with all of that stuff. So um, it seemed like he was well respected. All of the um, employees there seemed more like friends. They all um, very communal, very local style. Um, and as I mentioned, the flexible to changes, developing a niche, lean efficiency, and creating values seemed like a family. A very, even though it's a very large business, it seemed like they were very open with each other and open to suggestions. Um, when it comes to POSCO here, 
I think they were a very good example about maybe what Zhang Hong could have done to get bigger. What they could have done, maybe some perhaps mis mistakes or missed opportunities they could have taken to reach the level that Costco has uh, reached. So this way we were able to compare them and just to see the differences. Um, I think the important parts which Tom talked about, their code of conduct, rules of conduct, the developed HR department with POSCO, if perhaps uh, Zheng Hong could have adopted some similar procedure, maybe they could have expanded. Like uh, she mentioned, they don't need innovation because it's a very old company in Taiwan. It's invested by the government partially. Uh, but what if, what if they would strive for innovation? Perhaps they could have gotten bigger. Perhaps, perhaps they could have a larger market share because they, uh, China Steel is only 25th in the world, whereas POSCO is fifth. Who knows? But with a better um, established human resource department, things could have been different for the company. Um, as with the interview, um, it was curious for us because they seemed more interested in having foreigners in their office and joking around. Um, and we asked them, I'm like, how oh, do you offer internships for you know, mm. any master's students? And they said, <laughs> and I was like, what about the local Taiwanese students? And they said, pretty much that were overeducated to work there. And they said that yes, their engineers have master's degrees, but most of the other people are locals. Um, it's a low-paying, dangerous job where they don't fire employees. We all left. They said they had never fired an employee. Um, they just give them more training and move them into a different place because it seems like uh, Zheng Hong is just needs live bodies to keep the production line going, to keep it going. Um, whereas I'm sure their HR practices are a little different for um, their engineers and whatnot. So as she mentioned, the TTQS um, involved the planning, the design, do, and review, and outcome, which was developed by the government here. And another thing we found interesting, that KPI was only followed by the line, because they just want to know how many numbers you're turning, what you're producing, how you're um, producing these things. But in the internal office, it's an ABC scale. So just to conclude, um, we um, the main thing we wanted to compare Zheng Hong and Pasco was mainly the recruiting process because we were a little shocked that such a large company like a subsidiary of China Steel would not need any foreigners. But I did ask, we did ask a little bit more, and they do have an office, a separate office that does uh, recruit foreigners, but it's mostly just for translation, phone calls, uh, international deals. And um, and Pasco here, they believe in being a global citizen, a creator, and an executor. I believe that the way that POSCO did things is a good example of how an old business, an old steel business, can become a global company. So that's our presentation. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. So, do you know, uh, there are some uh, Zhong Hong executives, uh, they uh, transfer to Malaysia, to, uh, you know, to Wainan. Do you know this? You don't know. Uh, everything was, they didn't speak any English. So, so we had to have everything translated. To oh, you translated by it. Yeah, these girls are very important. <laughs> okay, yeah. I think uh, it's graduate is not from Zhonghong, it's from Zhonglao. Which Zhonglao. is to uh, trading business for Zhonghong. Actually, Zhonghong did uh, export their products a lot to uh, other countries overseas. But they were doing via uh, China trading company. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. You know, you know, because uh, Zhang Hong is also a uh, subsidiary of Zhang Kang, right? Yeah. Zhang Kang. So uh, some of the executive uh, was uh, yeah. uh, transferred from Zhang Kang, you know? you know? So actually, uh, we cannot just see this uh, local company uh, only uh, focusing on itself, the uh, business. Actually, uh, yeah, but however, it very, it's very good for you to compare the POSCO. Um, actually, uh, 20 years ago, POSCO is uh, a company, uh, a, competitor, a competitor of Zhonggang, China Steel. Yeah, they are competitor. Uh, however, uh, within these uh, 20 years, the, because of the government's policy, Taiwanese government policy, uh, POSCO become more international. Uh, China Steel was uh, limited uh, in uh, in Taiwan, uh, in Taiwan for their manufacturing, and only the trade 
some trade uh, trading uh, trading uh, center was set up in Singapore. You know, actually, uh, twenty years ago, when Chong, when China still went to invest in Malaysia, in Vietnam, in China, but the the Taiwan government, you no, know, they stop it. Don't do that. Okay, because China still is a state state warm company by 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 government. You no, know. and. <coughs> Yeah, I think yeah, for you, I really appreciate you. <laughs> this uh, fight uh, member can go to visit this very local local company. It's not easy for you, international student, to see what's the local in Taiwan. Uh, it was very different for us, especially how much they wanted like talk story. Uh huh. Was, uh, we call it a boy. We're um, very informal. They were more or less chatting with the girls. Where are you from? Blah blah blah. It's very different for our cultures where we want to maybe direct the interview in a way, but it was good to see how um, the more local businesses are run and um, just how um, a little bit special and like they have glass windows when you walk in and literally every employee was staring. <laughs> and everyone was staring. Uh, yeah, who is there? It just shows the closeness of the local companies and um, it seems like, didn't they say that all of their employees have been there for quite a long time? They don't fire um, employees, uh, which I don't know if that's a good or bad thing. Do not fire your employees. Um, I'd say it's pretty bad. I, I'd say it's bad too. I'm a little strange, um, but out there in Chalto, there's just not a lot of demand. I bet you many people don't want to live in that area. And, uh, this really find my uh, teaching purpose for many of you international students can go to visit a real local company. Yeah. You know, lo very, very local. So when we were there, Helen, you knew how many people were going to be Helen. Yeah, she knew everybody. Everybody. Uh, Helen at all, Hajjo Bajan, yeah. Uh, yeah. This is for the coach culture, right? Coach culture, uh, uh, sens sensitivity. Uh -huh. Most of you can know, oh yeah, this is the Taiwanese, very local, local company. I can say for someone like me to work in a company like that might be a, a little awkward. Uh -huh. It was um, very different. Um, uh -huh. It seemed very family, like everyone knew each other, and um, yeah. maybe lifetime employees. Like, yeah. Do you know why I just uh, say, oh, this is a chow to tongue. <laughs> no, this is a small tongue. Yeah. A small tongue. And, um, in, I don't like to say this uh, a rural area. Uh, no, yeah. Uh, yeah. suburban, no, just a suburban. Um, and so, you can know that in Taiwan, if you are uh, subsidiary, you are manufacturing site located in this, uh, uh, <laughs> not a rural area, it's a suburban area, it, uh, the employees' uh, compensation cannot be uh, go high. Yeah. No. And, and especially it seemed like a lot of the men coming in out were very quite old and they looked quite worn. Uh, they looked very dirty, like um, they work very hard for the money that they get. And um, from what I think that's a big reason they probably don't fire because there's probably not a lot of the new generation that is willing to do these jobs because as uh, Taiwan's younger generations are very well educated. Oh yeah, Do there will be a big gap in talent that we were talking about. Did they had the uh, the uh, image administration level at the foreign level? You know, uh, did they employ? Employment the uh, foreign labor. Like employees overseas. Yeah, no. not oh, yeah, just a foreign labor, you know. A foreign labor. Yeah, yeah, foreign labor. No, they don't. Okay, it's not easy for this company to recruit the young, you no, know, the young engineer work yeah. for it. Yeah. I think it'll be very hard. Um, maybe not necessarily the engineer, but the office staff, because even when um, I was. And whenever I visit a company, I try to ask them if they do internship possibilities, just in case there's anyone available. And of course, they don't want the foreigners because they don't speak mm -hmm. English or foreign languages. But they didn't even seem very interested in our Taiwanese classmates because they thought that they would be overeducated. Mm -hmm. Really, thank you. I uh, appreciate it. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Yeah. <coughs> I think uh, 30, 30 years ago, uh, Chong Hong was established. Uh, by one private company, Yi you know, Yi Lian, 
you know. So at that time, this company named uh, Ye Long, right? Ye Long, right? Yeah. And, and uh, its CEO and its the uh, top uh, engineer all come from China Steel. Thirty years ago, thirty years ago. So one of its uh, former CEO is my friend, uh, who uh, was acquired by Ye. By by Yiso, Ye Lian, no Ye Lian Group, uh, Ye Lian Group, uh, to uh, serve there, and <coughs> also uh, the most important uh, figure of this uh, company is the uh, uh, Mr. Guo, Mr. Guo. Go uh, into so after China Steel acquired uh, Zhong Hong, then Mr. Guo become the CEO of China Steel. Do you know this? Yeah. Okay. So interesting because Mr. Guo uh, only a, a vice CEO in China Steel. However, uh, Ye Lian acquired this Mr. Guo to serve in Ye, in in Zhong Hong. I I mean thirty years ago. And at that time, why Mr. Guo want to leave uh, China Steel? Because he cannot be promoted to be CEO. So he will leave, want to uh, stay in China Steel and, and went to Zhong Hong, right? But after, ten, uh, after 20 years, Zhong Hong was uh, acquired by China Steel. And you can imagine that Mr. Guo become the CEO of China Steel. <laughs> uh, that, yeah, it's an interesting story, history, yeah. However, uh, if you compare Zhong Hong with China Steel, in terms of their efficiency, quality, management practices, uh, their R&D, no way. Uh, no way. Uh, so Zhong Hong can really uh, suffer great loss within the, right? The, the, uh, since it was established. <laughs> Zhong, you know, Zhong Hong cannot uh, compete with China Steel in terms of efficiency, quality, and uh, technology. No way. No way. So, uh, however, uh, uh, because the political, uh, political uh, region, a uh, lot, uh, Zhong Hong was acquired by China Steel. Okay. And I know that China Steel try to uh, <coughs> promote uh, Zhong Hong's uh, efficiency, you know, and their quality uh, management and everything. But just as I say that, because of the, uh, their locality, you no, know, even location, uh, location. Uh, so most of their employees are not so competent as China Steel engineer. You cannot. So you compare the the compensation, compare their competence. Okay, no. However, in in the global market, look at in the global market because this uh, a steel product, uh, this steel product can be divided into the different grade, no? the high-end grade or the low-end grade. Yeah. And within these uh, 10 years, many steel companies uh, were rising from China. Right, Baogang, no? Many, uh, just, uh, however, all, all the China steel company, China, uh, the China steel company, they cannot provide this uh, high High end, you no know, high quality, and high priced uh, steel product. They cannot. However, uh, their price is a very regional, you know, very regional price, regional price, uh, cheaper. So, <laughs> China steel cannot. China steel cannot compete with the many. China, <laughs> no, the China steel company. 
in this situation, Zhong Hong, <laughs> Zhong Hong become a competitor of many the China, <laughs> no, the China, the, the, the China local, China local uh, steel company, yeah. Uh, so this is uh, a strategy by China Steel, right? When you want to compete in this uh, high-end market, high-end market, okay, the China Steel's product very good. But you want to compete with, in this, uh, no, uh, button level uh, market, yeah, Zhong Hong, <laughs> Zhong Hong, right? And I think so. If, if when you compare the Chong Hong's uh, practice with the possible, yeah, not easy. But if you compare the China Steel, China Steel is a very uh, uh, competitive company, competitive uh, steel company in the world. You know, you know the Ch the China Steel CEO, the former CEO, Mr. Wang. He's the chairman of the world of the, the World uh, Steel Association. The World Steel so Association. He's the chairman. The chairman. Yeah. He's a very famous guy. Very famous guy. Yeah. Okay. So I really appreciate this group. Uh, you had this uh, opportunity and you can uh, went through it. Can go to this uh, local, very local, and you should, you should know. Oh, why? Why is so local? Because this company located in this uh, suburban area or rural area, you no. Know? And most of employee, you know, I, uh, I think, getting older, right? Getting older. Yeah, it's a very old population up there. I worked in Luju. I Luju. Worked out there for two years, and um, oh, yeah, very near Chaco, and uh, very, a much older population. You know, in Taiwan, the, the young generation, they don't want to stay in rural area, even the suburb area, right? To, right? Stay. I don't want to live there either. I lived in Gaoshan, I took the train. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. Okay. Yep. So, if your group can try to figure out why you come in so local, okay? Local, I know uh, all the practices are uh, local, very... Uh, Local level, okay. Thank you. Uh, so next week, mm, next week, I will. Uh, there will three group, right? Three group, yeah. Three group. <coughs> the last three group, yeah. You, yeah. And where the the other two? Yeah, you. Uh, okay. Thank you. So please uh, prepare, okay, for the final. Thank you. Yeah. So let's stop here.